بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد today إن شاء الله we're gonna be learning about um, الجنة والنار so paradise and hellfire we're gonna look at hellfire first uh, so we're gonna look at the description of hellfire this is summarization of a book by a sheikh called Umar al Ashqar and his book is actually called al Jannah wal Nar I put a link um in the classroom so it's um i think it's about 100 pages so today we're going to cover because he starts with the hellfire first and that's what we did so we're going to cover um the description of hellfire today and inshallah in the next lesson we can cover the description of al jannah paradise so the definition uh what is the definition of hellfire so hellfire is a, an abode that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who don't believe in him, okay? Or those who rebel against him, those who don't believe him like um, the non-believers, and also for shaitan, those who rebel against him and people who are like shaitan, and those who disbelieve in his messengers. So it's a punishment for the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a prison for the evildoers, so they will come out if they... If they if they are Muslim, they will come out. And also, it's a humiliation. It's the ultimate way to be humiliated, and it's a great loss. There's nothing worse than going to hellfire. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Inna al-khasirin al-ladin khasiru anfusahum wa ahlihim yom al-qiyam." Allah Taala kahu al-khusran mubin. Allah said, "The the losers are those who lose themselves and their families on the day of resurrection." That would be the greatest loss. So the great losers are those who end up in hellfire. That's the greatest loss for your family also to end up in hellfire. Um, so as an introduction, we can say that paradise and hellfire have already been created, so they exist. That's the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that they already exist. And we know that we're going to see that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also was shown paradise and hellfire. And also there's... Um, the way Allah describes it, it shows that it exists. I'm not going to mention all the ahadith and the ayat because that will be really long. So, um, but I'll summarize probably some of the ayats you already know. Who are the keepers of hellfire? The keepers of hellfire are the angels. So they stern, they severe, and they execute Allah's command without fail. Okay. Why did Allah make them the keepers? So they don't get bribed. They don't have any sympathy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya you alladhina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you believe, save yourselves and your families from hellfire. Waqudu hannas wal hijara is fueled by people and stones. Alayha malaikatun ghiladun shidadun la ya'asun allaha ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marum. So that Allah describes the angels in this way. Also, where is hellfire? Some people said, some scholars said it's in the heavens, okay, because when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa went up in Isra wa Al-Iraj, you know, he went up and like heaven. Some people say it's below the earth, like in the core. But the, the best thing to say is we don't know exactly where it is. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. That's the best opinion. Also, the vast extent of hell. How big is hell? We know hell is huge. Because just one person who's in hellfire is himself humongous. And the, pop, the population who are going to hellfire, they're also uh, a lot. Uh, we're going to see that uh, one person in hellfire will be um, like his, his tooth. This will give an example of how big he is. His tooth, molar tooth, will be the same size as Mount Uhud, which is one of the biggest mountains in, in Medina. The same size as that. Also, uh, the shoulders from one shoulder blade or to one side to the other side, uh, the hadith says it, takes, it will take three days to travel. In other words, they, uh, there's another hadith which says um, that there will be basically, the, if they were to sit down, they will cover the distance between Mecca and Medina, which is 400 kilometers. So if they were to sit down, they will cover that much space, 400 kilometers. Uh, the, we're going to see also, so that just tells you if one of them is that big, 
then how big is hellfire? So hellfire is also like where there's hadith which say that the angels will be the angels will pull hellfire on the day of judgment and they will bring it. And it, there will be 70,000 angels, and then on each reign, there will be another 70,000 angels. So 70,000 times 70,000 angels pulling hellfire. Okay. Uh, and also, um, there's a hadith which says that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi one time he heard a sound, a loud sound, and then he said, something was thrown from the beginning of time and it only reached the bottom of hellfire now so it takes a long time to get to the, the depth of hellfire the levels of hellfire it has levels like paradise so the levels of paradise go up and the levels of hellfire go down so darajat and darakat and we're going to see who's in the lowest and who's in the highest the gates of hell are seven okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the quran uh, that has seven doors, seven gates, and then there's there's a gate for every يعني, for specific people who commit certain sins. That's all in the Quran. Uh, if I go down, the fuel of hellfire, like we said, it is people and stones. Why stones? It's said because people who used to worship stones and idols, they would see it being punished with them. Allah says that uh, what you uh, what you and what you worship are um, are the fuel of hellfire. Also, how intense is the heat of hellfire? Uh, its smoke and he is so fast and it sparks as well. So uh, the hell, the air of hell is called a samoon, which is like intensely hot wind. Its water is called hamim, which is boiling water. Its shade is called yahmoom which is the part of the smoke of hell. Sparks are like forts, like castles, okay? As if they were like, when they being thrown, as if they were, they were yellow camels. كَأَنَّهُ جِمَالَةُ صُفْ Okay, Allah says in the Quran. So that's how big just the sparks are. And then it's 69 times hotter than the, any fire on earth, or on, in this universe now. So it could be hot, hotter than... Um, Hotter than basically the sun, hotter than the sun, the surface of the sun. Also, hell can speak and it can see, it will be raging and roaring. Okay, so when it's brought on the day of judgment, um, it will be making this noise to scare people. And also, when Allah puts people in it, Allah will ask, Halim talati wa ta'ulu hal min mazid. It will be asked, Are you full? And he would say, is there more? Like, he wants more. <clears throat> uh, also, has anybody seen hellfire in, in real life before the Day of Judgment? Um, yes. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. And there might be people who see hellfire in their dreams. But Ibn Umar saw in a dream that he was taken to a hellfire and he saw people being punished. And then he tells um, his sister Hafsa and she tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he's a good man, he's a righteous man. Um, also, everybody, when they die, they get to see their position in Jannah and their position in the Hellfire. So everybody has two places. So if the person ends up in Jannah, he will take another a Kafir's place in Jannah, and then a, a Kafir will take his place in Hellfire. So he will inherit from him. So everybody will see their place in Jannah uh, and in Naar and which one they would go. And also the Prophet Sallallahu went on a journey and he saw people being punished in hellfire. And this is the description that we are, that's where we get a lot of the description from as well. Um, and you've probably seen how the Quran describes hellfire in detail. So there's a purpose behind that. Um, how many people are going to be in hellfire? So Remember we said that every thousand is going to be 999 going to hellfire. That's what, including Yajuju Majuj. But if you take out Yajuju Majuj, uh, that will be for every thousand, 10 will go to Jannah. For every thousand, 10 will go to Jannah. 
So why is that? It's because there's so many temptations to go to hellfire. Uh, there's many temptations. There's so many things that you know Shaitan tempts them with. Um, people don't want to do good. They don't want to obey Allah. So there's many reasons why a lot of people uh, they just want a lot of people want to enjoy life. Okay, and that's that's the problem. Most of those who enter hellfire would be women. And Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ra'aytu kunna akthara akthar." He said, I saw most of you were like a majority of people uh, were women. And Muhammad said, Why? He said, al-ashir wa al You don't appreciate your spouses or your husbands and you curse a lot. So these are things which cause a person to, to go to hellfire. But there's many ways. For a woman to easily fall into hellfire, just if she just wear hijab, if she you know, becomes uh, a fitna for men, if you know, there's many reasons uh, for a woman to go to hellfire, that could be a reason more than a man. That's one. It could also be that there's more um, there's more women in time. In look, if you look at the population, there's more women than men. That could be a reason, especially at the end of time, there's going to be a 50 man for every one woman. That's a ratio. So, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, you can save yourselves from hellfire by um, giving charity. And also, if you want to look at society, look at their women. If the women are good, then the, you know, they will bring up good children and like that. Anyway, like we said, the size of the people of hellfire are huge. I mentioned this. Uh, also, their skin is 40 cubits thick. Okay, so one cubit, you know one cubit is from the... It's like you're basically from your tip of your fingers to the elbow. That's like one cubit. So that's about a meter. So 40 meters, you can see. 40 meters. That's how thick the uh, the skin is. Why is their, their skin this thick and why they're so huge? So they can taste the punishment. You can taste uh, this punishment. And then you can imagine how big are the angels as well for them to control this. That's that much population. Uh, so though, here you can see how they will be shackled as well. I think I put the picture in the wrong place. But they will be shackled from their necks to their hands and their legs. And we're going to look at that anyway. But before that, we're going to look at their food. The food and drink and the clothing, clothing of the people of Hellfire. Are you guys still with me? Yeah. Okay. So they will be eating bitter, tari, so obnoxious. Uh, it's a thorny plant that that would choke them. So that's in Surah al uh, Bariyah. Okay, so it's thorny. is a plant that they can't even they can't swallow it. That's one, and it doesn't make them become. It doesn't nutrify to give them nutri nutrition. It doesn't take away any hunger. Um, also, they will be eating from a tree called Zakum. The shoots of its fruit stalks are like the heads of devils. Okay? Um, that's in the Quran as well. So it's like the fruit, like what they're eating, is easily reminds them of their companion in, in, in this world, which is shaitan. Also, it is so toxic and so dangerous that if one drop taken from that tree, like if it's made into liquid and put into the... Uh, a drop was placed on earth, it will destroy everything. All the human beings, all the animals, all the plants, the whole universe, the whole basic world will destroy. That's how toxic and, and dangerous it is. That's what, but that, they will be eating that. Also, uh, they will be drinking boiling water, molten brass. Okay, so that would cut up their bowels to pieces. And it will scald, the water will scald their faces when they try to drink it. So molten brass is... When metal, you see this picture here, when the metal becomes boiled, when it's melted and it becomes like that, that's called molten brass. So that's what they'll be drinking. And will they, they will be drinking this hot water or this molten brass. They won't be like, when somebody doesn't want to eat food because it's disgusting, they won't have a choice. They will be drinking it like diseased camels raging with thirst. Allah said, like camels who are it's like if you've seen camels drink water, you would see they drink a lot. They even store uh, water said in their veins and all of that. So they drink a lot. 
This is how they will be drinking. Also, they will have a fluid which is dark, murky, intensively cold, basaq, and it will be offensive as well. Some people say it's an offensive discharge that flow, flows from the private parts of women who commit zina. It's decaying skin of uh, also the non-believers. It's their sweat. This is what they will be drinking. Okay? Um, so on top of all these things that they, where they are and what they're drinking, which is not something that anybody would even, they would just rather stay hungry, but they're forced to drink as punishment. Um, on top of that, they're going to have punishment. So on top of that, they're going to be punished. Just being there enough is enough. But then on top of that, there's going to be punishment. So there's many pen punishments, uh, torments, and torture for them in hellfire, different levels. The, f the least punishment, like we know, uh, we, we've seen, is the um, uh, Ali, uh, Abi Talib. Abu Talib, okay? Um, Abu Talib, who will have, like under the arch of his feet, he will have um, some stones placed a smoldering ember, like stones, and these stones will boil his brain. The heat will boil his brain, basically. That's the least punishment. Um, as for the worst punishment, it will be for the hypocrites. They will be fi darkil asbari min Allah. The hypocrites will be in the lowest parts of hellfire. They will get the worst punishment. Uh, there's many people who have mentioned they will go to hellfire and they will be punished like Fir'aun and his people Haman. Um, also, their bodies will be roasted. Their skins will be roasted. Yashwil wujuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullama najidat Every time their, their skin is roasted, they will get new skin to taste the punishment. So we're talking about 40 meters of skin that gets roasted, and then they get new skin, okay? Uh, also, it's said that they'll, they will start to melt as well because this hot water will be poured over their heads, and it will melt their insides as well. And everything outside. But we melt their insides and everything inside, scorching of the face. So they will, Yeshul Wujur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it will displace their faces and their lips will be disformed, disfigured. Obviously, with all that fire. They will be dragged on their faces when they're thrown into hellfire, shackled. Their faces will become wet, black because of the, the heat, the smoke, and the, the agony. Uh, their garments will be cut out from fire as well. Allah says, Sarabiluhum min qadiran. Uh, they'll have clothes cut for them from fire. And also, there's another one which is qadiran. Um, so basically, there will be clothes will be fire. They will be surrounded by fire. So their beds, lahum mihadun, their mihad, and their, their beds will be fire. Their blankets will be fire. They will be covered with fires and their hearts would leap, like the fire will leap over their hearts, which means basically the fire will burn the whole body. They will die. Even their hearts, which will be remaining, which they will still be pumping, and then that will be covered with fire. Uh, and then Allah will bring back their body again. So they, you know how somebody, when he gets burnt and the fire reaches a certain level, he dies. But for them, they're not going to die. Their uh, entrails will be spilled out in the fire, so their intestines, uh, their, their stomach, everything inside will fall out, and uh, they will be basically going. There's one man who will be going around uh, like a donkey around the place, and people will say to him, well, somebody said, what, hap what, what happened to you? And he said, I used to tell people to do good, but I used to do the opposite, I used to do the haram. Also, their chains, their fetters, and the hammers, they would have all these different punishments. Their fetters is those chains which where they, they're connected from the neck and the legs. Uh, they'll be chuckled like that. It could, it could be, as one ayah says, سَبْعُونَ ذِرَاعًا فَاسْلُكُوهُ They will have 70 cubits of uh, chains. That one had, uh, It says that it would go into his mouth and come out from, his, um, from the backside. And then it will be completely, if it will be shackled, then it will be dragged and thrown into hellfire. 
there will be hooked iron rods to punish them as well. And also, like we said, they'll be accompanied by the objects they used to worship. Whoever used to worship the health, uh, who used to worship Shaitan, Shaitan is there with him. Whoever used to worship like the cross, whoever, uh, whoever used to worship the sun and the moon, sun and moon will be there. They'll be turned into bulls and like that. So this is what's going to happen to them as a disgrace. Um, then they will start to feel sorrow, and regret and make dua. So that's what you're supposed to do when you're and on this world, it's supposed to feel sad that if you committed a sin, it's supposed to regret, it's supposed to make dua. And they, this is when they cry for it, they declare the repentance, they, rec they cry to be released, uh, they, sometimes they plead for destruction, they want to be destroyed, they will cry, uh, our Rabb, bring us out, uh, and let us come out. Uh, and they would say, uh, let Allah like lighten one day of punishment from us. Let us have one day of rest. But that's not going to happen because um, the, Allah will respond to them or the angels will respond and give Allah's response. They will be told after thousands and thousands of years, remain humiliated in there and don't talk. Okay, so like we said, they will be asking them. The God, uh, God of Hellfire, they will be saying, Ya Maliku liyakdi alayna rabbuk, qala inna kumma kithul. They would say, ask Allah to destroy us and end us. And they will be told, no, you're staying in there and you remain humiliated. So they will weep and cry. They will weep so much that the scholars said that their, their tears, it would, it would be so much, it would be enough to make ships float. But not not their their tears will not be tears will be blood. They will be weeping blood. Okay, and they will be sighing in high and low tones. So Safir wa Shahiq Allah says. So it's like when they're breathing in and they're breathing out, and sometimes they'll be screaming loud. Sometimes they'll be like making these noises, screaming and any like of tiredness. So uh, this is. This is how they will remain forever and forever if they've been born believers. And um, if they've been believers and they committed sins, they will come out one day. Um, so this is how they will face this punishment. The question is then, how could a person stay, from, stay away from going to hellfire? So how could you save yourself from hellfire? Number one is to save yourself from kufr and disbelief. Because that will cause a person to stay in hellfire forever. Secondly, is to come with uh, good deeds, iman and righteousness. Al iman or amal salih. And also, you need to always make, ask Allah to save you from hellfire. So the Muslims pray to their Rabb with faith to save them from hellfire. They say, those who say, Our Lord, our Rabb, we have indeed believed. Okay, forgive us uh, uh, then and our sins and save us from the agony of hellfire. Also, like you can say, waqina adab anna, waqina adab anna, save us from hellfire. Rabbana inna na zalamna anfusana wa illa tafil lana wa tarhamna lana kunana min al-khasirin. I to always ask Allah to forgive you, so repentance is very important. Uh, also, to ask Allah to save you uh, from hellfire, we do that after every salah as well. Also, to number the one thing that could save someone from entering hellfire is the love of Allah. To love Allah, because if someone loves Allah, he will not enter hellfire. Okay, because if a person loves Allah, he will follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That means he will enter Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "In kuntum tuhibun Allah, fatabiruni yuhibkum Allah wa yafir lakum." If you truly love Allah, then follow me, which is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, Allah will forgive your sins. Okay. So that's number one. Another, there's many ahadiths who talk about how to save, be saved from hellfire. But next one, the Sheikh mentions these, and he said number two is fasting. That's what we're going to be doing soon. So, um, if a person fasts one day, he will be saved as if he's taken seventy years or winters away from hellfire. So you're, you become distant from hellfire every day you fast, and. Uh, one day of fasting, so we're going to be fasting 30 days, inshallah, or 29. 
that every year that would help you to stay away from hellfire also we know in ramadan the gates of hellfire are closed and also um allah frees people from hellfire and that's every night so ramadan is really all about saving yourself from hellfire and also to have the fear of allah if you have the fear of allah um uh, you will have two positions in Jannah or two two uh, houses in Jannah. Okay, so we have a house of fear of Allah. Uh, and also the hadith also mentions like people who f cry for the sake of Allah and also the p people who fight to defend uh, the Muslims. And the hadith says the person who you know defends the Muslims, then he will um, he, he he will not face you know this uh, being in dust two times. So basically somebody who's uh, killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fighting the way of Allah. So anyway, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hellfire uh, because just this uh, description makes you afraid uh, of being in, ending in hellfire. And remember, this is what the companions, uh, the prophets, what when they ask Allah to save them from hellfire, when they're committing sin, if anybody commits sins, this is what they're supposed to picture, but the prophets would, you know, actually have this in their minds and the companions as well. So they actually knew what hellfire is when, when they're told you'll be saved from hellfire if you do this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hellfire.